Hello everyone and welcome back for another episode of Inkbound. Uh, in the last uh, episode we finished off our run with the uh, the obelisk. Uh, we switched back to the magma miner, we're going to jump back in. We've got more quests uh, defeating every villain once more, we've done one out of three of those. Plenty of things for us to be doing. Uh, I just want to have a very quick scout around just to make sure that we've grabbed everything nearby because it's very easy to miss things that get squirreled away a little bit. And now we've got a slightly better understanding of the mechanics, I'm kind of curious to see if our build is going to end up any different to last time. We need to uh, focus on Birdie on Fire. As, uh, as far as stories go, so we're going to see what the options are when we get in. Hello. Well, you and your quill sure seem to be getting on. The stronger the bond, the stronger the binding, so they say. That seems used reasonable. To one bonded to me once. Closest friend I ever had. Closer than that, even. Hmm, what happened? It's like, have you ever known someone so well and so intimately you felt like there was nothing separating you aside from mortal flesh. Forgive the philosophy, but that doesn't make it any less true. You and your quill, at the end of it all, might as well be the same soul. Makes you think. If someone was hurting that soul, that piece of you, what hells would you travel to make sure they don't hurt anymore? Oh, that's getting a bit deep. A little bit deep. Uh, right, so uh, we've currently got the Mark of the Unbound on, immune to blight for the first five, five turns of combat. Every five times you use it, we gain six Omni damage. We're going to keep that uh, and we're going to keep uh, with our Magma Miners. So, what have we got in terms of options? It wants us to do Radiant Market tasks and Silent Promenade tasks, and both of these are good options. Let's go to the Radiant Market. As for completing the parts of Birdie on Fire, no idea how we'll do that. It might be a story that crops up now that we're, like, part way into the game. Okay, let's have a look. What options do we have? 35% chance to gain a will. That's always good. Get more quillings. It's nice on the surface of it. But maybe we could lean into the whole ambush of things. So things that happen when you enter enter combat. Yeah, let's let's try for for ambusher and swift. We'll see uh, see how those feel. So we've got an augment gain five damage and five movement for an efficient bonk. That's Pretty solid, it's, a, it's not a small amount. Wrecking Smash on defeating an enemy, gain three shield. It's very specific to actually succeeding in defeating an enemy. Or Bolstered Leap, extra damage, increased range, slightly larger over effect. This is better than the efficient bonk, I would say. We may only be able to use it infrequently, but having a larger area of effect is gonna be very useful. We'll grab that and uh, we'll go in from there. Uh, let's go for the two tarnished vaults. Try and get more vestiges. Right, Mark of the Unbound. So we could start off on this. Well, this isn't really like a goop bit. It will become a goop bit, but at the moment it's not. So let's have a look. Leaping Strike allows us to move around. We've got the Ink Pot uh, who will launch a bomb towards us, but for the moment that isn't going to. Yeah, let's just hit everyone with this. The Smash is gonna allow us to do a lot of damage be wasted on this guy but we could almost kill him in one go 
Let's smack him and then we'll start bonking. If we go just to the other side, we can get all three of them. Grab that. Two dead. And we have time. Right, that is definitely blight. So let's go and step into it. We're immune to it for the first five turns of combat. But the more we do within it, the better we're going to be. Let's use a leaping strike to get over up by this. And we can even come back down and hit it again. Just outside of the area? Yeah. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. Right in, smack him again. There we go, marker of the unbound. We are starting to get it and we can see it counting up as well each time we're doing something. So this is how we're gonna improve our overall damage. Ooh, choices. We now have an incentive to do less damage but work on our future, future output. It means we're going to take a bit more damage off this right now. Not really much we can do about that. Uh, let's just... Uh, ooh. Can we hit him from all the way back here? Yes, and it counts. Great. All right, I guess we're standing on the very edge of some of the uh, the maps then. We managed to get 12% increased damage just from walking around in the blight. Okay, let's, uh, let's think. Brace Belt makes a lot of sense for us right now. Building up a little bit of shield is going to be useful. The Burn It All Gauntlets, they're nice. The Voice of Fortunes is also nice, but the Brace Belt, I think, is going to be directly useful right now. So we'll grab that. Over here, Pincushion, extra spike damage. Mm, Verdant. Verdant's pretty good for building up resources over time. We could lean in towards the poison damage as well. Let's grab that. And drafting a new binary. Ooh. That looks like a fireball to me. We haven't tried cultivate though. We haven't tried cultivate. And I th think this could be kind of interesting. It might end up counting as an ally for us. Which means some of the other bindings could end up affecting it. Okay. Uh, we don't want to go to Carver's Refuge just yet. Free binding augment and the option to purchase another. We don't have many resources. Let's do the Sea Breach right now. What's this? Vulnerable on all enemies. It's definitely not a bad thing. Okay, you stand inside a musty room. A boiler in the corner gives off a little light from a barely flickering flame, but you can still make out a figure shoveling coal, attempting to keep it alive. A train whistle blares and they turn in your direction to reveal their skin, dripping away like wax. They gesture to the flame. Do you throw anything in? So, we can't throw lots of quillings in. We could throw some quillings in, though. Or we could get ourselves an uncommon vestige. Uh, let's get a rare vestige. Let's just spend some money and get something cool. 
extra only damage per stack of heat. That's pretty good, actually. That works quite well for our build. It means our, our damage output is going to be pretty variable, but I'm fine with that. Big Quilling Cage and the Tarnished Vault. Yeah, let's go for the hard combat encounter. We'll try and really just lean into our Omni damage and draw this out if we can. Ooh, hello. Treasure Pot. Okay. Let's put ourselves a plant over there. Disappears in six turns. And we can collect it? Interesting. Oh, right. It grows. And then we can get it back for more points. Okay, I think I understand how it's supposed to work. I really want to hit that treasure pot, but I feel like I need to focus on these guys. Let's get a leaping strike in here. We'll back up a teeny bit. Hit them. You know what? I'm going to hit them again. Let's get gills and be done with it. We'll grab this, which will reduce the cooldown on some things. We don't need to move. So maybe we come across and uh, smack this guy while our heat stacks are super high. Especially while we've got the critical on him. And in fact, the Miner's Gloves are actually going to play really well in with that Cultivate because it's going to allow us to save stuff for the future in a way. Alright, let's get our Leaping Strike in down here. We're going to back up a teeny bit so we're just on, on the goop. I was hoping we'd be able to hit all three of them, but we're going to have to settle for just two. Smack, smack. Big smack there. That gets rid of the treasure pot. We'll grab this. Big hit there. And I think we're good. Okay, step just far enough in that we're covered by the goop. Do the jump there. We can hit three of them nicely. Two there. We can slide across and grab this one and maybe do the smash on... Yeah, let's do that. So we'll grab this. We'll do a smash on you to get you killed. And then we could we could clear more of them out. Let's really push it. So big bonk that way. Can we get somewhere where we can hit two of them? Yeah, we can actually hit both of these. Uh, let's go for the ink pot down in the south. There we go. The Cultivate really, really works for us. I'm getting 10% extra damage per strike that we do is really quite nice for this build. The Minus Loves, I like them. So lots of money. What have we got here? Rosy Thorn. That would give us Verdant, which I do want. 
On your turn, if your Omni damage is zero, gain one will. Well, our Omni damage is never going to be zero, so this is no use to us. Uh, let's get the Rosy Thorn. We'll save our money for rerolls for a bit later. Really, really liked Jinx, but I think we'll go for Incendiary. Out of all those options, I think that's where we want to be spending things. Destroy Vestige to permanently gain double its sets. Um, we get rid of the Rosy Thorn, actually. That would uh, that would give us a bit more verdant. We're not really using spiked, so that seems reasonable. None of the other options are particularly amazing. What's this giving us potentially? Can we drink it already? No, you've got to be in combat. All right, we'll keep our current current stuff. That feels much better. Okay, over here, we're going to get rid of the Rosy Thorn. That takes us up to Verdant 3. So we're going to be gaining max hit points after each combat. Ooh, Uncommon Augment. Superior Vault. Mm, let's go for the Superior Vault. Nothing around the edge that I can see. So we'll just hop straight in and focus on the damage that we can do to these guys. What have you got? Phasing. First thing is going to be dodged. We'll put Cultivate over there. We can get a Fireball on both of these guys. He's going to dodge it, but at least it'll affect the other guy. And it does put burn on, which is always nice. So hit the both of you. Then we'll get the critical bonk off. Grab this. Leaping strike on both of them seems like the smart call. Let that pass for this turn. Lots of goop available. Let's work it out. It's a hit. That's a second hit. That's a third hit. We can't go over there and grab that, which would allow us to do another leaping strike. Which, if we're going to do, we better do from the Poison Blight area. And then hit you both again, and then we can just stand and tank it. Return. Plenty more inky goodness just a little bit below us. Let's step down a teeny bit. Oh yeah, we'll... Definitely hit all three of you. Get a critical off on them as well. Two dead. Bit of fire damage? Why not? And then I want to grab this and then I want to try and do something about these guys but you're phasing so you're not going to take any damage from it so maybe it'd be better to focus on you two let's do a leaping strike like this so much extra damage i mean we're up to 136 percent extra damage from from the way we work this Okay, time to, to do the big hits. So we'll grab that. 
Let's get the smash here. Just creep. Just keep increasing that damage output. Seven stacks from the Mark of the Unbound. This is just going to get better. Uh, on your first turn, gain two will. Ooh, we were thinking about the Ambushers stuff. So the first two turns will gain two will if we get that. I like that. Yeah, let's um let's lean into that as an idea. And then up here, Sovereign's Flag, Valmark. We know this is no use to us. Treasure Hunter. We do want bits of the shadow set. So I could get this just to burn it so that we can start winning combat and tick off that task. Let's take it. Let's take it and we'll hope to find another piece. Ooh. Options. The Overflowing Study Chronicler and this Quill List. I think we need to go to the study because I've never seen that before. Well, before we get into the nitty gritty, let's see what we've got here. Token of Regret. Extra Wheel Reserve. Reduced hit points, reduced shielding. Don't like it. Fleece of Gold. On gaining shield, gain a Shattered Wheel. Hmm. Shattered Wheel, we need to get up to 10 stacks. So that's not really much use to us. Alchemist means really using a lot of potions. Let's re-roll them. We've got plenty. Plenty that we can spend money on. Nothing Ambusher or Shadow. I think we'll re-roll again. Storm King is always nice. But no, let's uh, let's hit it one more time. It might be that Shadow needs to be higher higher rarity. 25% chance to gain a will on defeating an enemy though, that's pretty big. Also, direct retaliation is is massive. Shadow Shroud. There we go. On turn start, take one damage. 30% extra damage flat. So we're going to be taking damage constantly now. And we've uh, we've spent money in the in the market. Right, who are you? Liz, hurry up and look presentable. One of the silent wonders is here. Hello there, Needless. What well, none of this must be for you to finally meet the genius, the legendary, the once-in-a-lifetime intellect, the Chronicler, and his quill companion, Lys. Nothing? Quickest counsellor of the Third Age? Fabled author of a thousand tomes? Binded to the brightest sliver of creation? Oh, what do they teach up there anymore? Well, should Epiphany finally strike, we shall be hit. Can we carry on talking? I guess we need to quest to do something here. I guess we're going to Carver's Refuge. We do still have some money. So we could buy an Uncommon Augment. Let's have a chat over here first. I charge you to stare if you keep at it, Needless. Might not be selling these carvings, but that don't make them common. And those silent eyes of yours make focus in hard work. I do wonder what the carvings are for. These carvings can take months for a single leg to do it right. 
You need patience and you need discipline. You hear me? Not just anyone able to make something or nothing. And even those that can, shouldn't. Especially you binders. But most importantly, they need silence. Of the alone variety. So be buying or be moving. Well, you ain't selling, so I be moving. What have we got over here? We're probably not going to buy any of these. A bounty hunter's pistol on defeating an enemy with your damage more than double their hit points gain quillings. That's kind of cool. That is kind of cool. Um, obviously, we're not going to spend the money on it, but uh, I like it. I like it. Let's buy ourselves an uncommon augment. Ooh, we can make this give us shield. It doesn't feel very useful because we're going to leave it sitting there for a long time. We've got four glyphs. Let's do some re-rolling. Getting health back could be cool. But explosive incendiary feels like that's going to be amazing. Heated smash could also be very good because the three stacks of heat would really work for us. But I, I, I want the explosive incendiary. Okay, onwards we go. The captor. All right. How are we going to start this? We're going to start it by uh, getting a little plant cultivating. We can hit you two with incendiary, which is fine. It's currently got like a soul shield thing. I think we can only hit one thing with a smash. Leaping Strike will hit all three of these though. So let's do that. Then we'll get a smash on you just to get you done. We've got so much mobility, it is deliciously disgusting. Hit you twice. Nice goopy area. Let's do everything we can in this. So we're going to go with a leaping strike on all three. Get a bonk. Oh, I was hopeful we'd be able to. Hit them all. We'll get those two to start off with and then we'll swing around and get to... You know what? Let's make sure he's dead. Let's just make sure that's a thing. We'll go that way as well. We've got that to grab. Get a stack of incendiary on him. That's going to do a lot. Maybe it'd be better to hit you. Just to nuke him down. And then we can move a bit out of the area. Take a little bit of damage. I think we're just hitting him as much as we can at this close range. Smash should do a lot, but if we leave Smash until our last potential hit. 609. It's pretty, pretty good. Still going to take a lot of damage from this, though. Sentry on U3. We're gonna jump up and over like this. That's gonna give us four will. If I get another cultivate down, 
and grab that now. That's going to let us do quite a lot. Our mobility is still super high. Let's see if we can get uh, this guy killed. So smack, smack. Grab that for another one on the old bonk damage. Still currently three damage, but we can back the hell out of there and make it zero. Let's do a leap straight across. Sentry burn on that plant is just a little bit too far away, but we'll grab it there. We can almost smash this thing out of existence, but not quite. We took a bit of damage, but as it was the boss fight, we can heal up straight after. So, I really quite like this build. We're only up to eight stacks of this, but it's still 78% increased damage just from standing in the goop and working with it. Bonk costs you zero will the first two times you use it each turn. It is incredible. It is incredible doing that. I think that is a really smart choice. Dense Leap is another smart choice, but Whack -a Bonk is going to really work in with the Mark of the Unbound and with our heat stacks. So we'll get that. Or we can upgrade Incendiary. 102 damage to a single enemy, 12 stacks of burn. Uh, wildfire doesn't seem amazing, if I'm honest. Flashfire, though, doubling their stacks of burn. I don't like either of these though, because we've got incendiary in order for it to be an area of effect thing. Let's re-roll. So, cultivate. Mushroom which grants one will and 20 omni damage until the end of turn for each turn it's on the ground. That's kind of cool. Or flower bloom for... Flower bloom's probably going to be more useful to us. Because this is effectively the same as that. It's just it's going to allow us to take more actions, which is going to allow us to build up more stacks of the mark with the unbound. I think uh, I think that's the right choice to make. All right, that's a good point for us to finish this episode off. Very different build coming together for this magma miner run so far, uh, but obviously it is very very early days. Thank you very much for coming along, everyone. I do hope you have enjoyed this. As always, if you have, be sure to give a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do so, and you'll be told when the next episode goes live. Otherwise, I'll see you next time for another episode of Inkbound. See you soon.